Hi, this is Brandon Slade from ThirstGym.com. Today we're talking about exercises called the Swiss Bar Floor Press First Chains. We've talked about the Swiss Bar Floor Press in the past. This is the exact same exercise. We're just going to add chains on it and briefly talk about why you might implement chains with the Swiss Bar and the Floor Press and, and the combination that we have. So we've got our Swiss Bar in our rack here. Um, I've already got some weight on it. And by Swiss Bar, we basically mean a multi-grip bar that has various handles on it. So we've got three neutral grip handles on this bar and a V-pattern based grip uh, here in the middle of the bar. This one's from Elite FTS. There's multiple manufacturers. This is just what we've chosen to outfit our gym with. And what I really like about this bar is that the, the handles are in generally a very good position for a close, medium, and wide. So if you want to be able to switch your hands up, you have the ability to do so. And obviously you can use this for other exercises as well, not just the floor press or the bench press. Um, with the floor press, we talked about the reason we like this exercise a lot here at Thirst is the fact that we get our shoulders um, externally rotated while we're pressing, so it's safer on the shoulder joint long term. And then the floor press is also an added benefit as when we go down, the upper part of our arm is going to hit the floor, and that's going to limit the amount of range of motion we can get there as well. So we're going to hit usually about a good 90 degree angle, and that's where we're going to stop. The main thing you need to understand, though, is that the length of your arms on your athlete or your client is going to dictate where that stops. Somebody short-armed like myself is pretty much a full range of motion exercise. Some of the really long, lanky arms, it's going to look like a two-board or a three-board press. The reason we're going to add the chains, the chains add a stimulus to the exercise that we would not get based upon the strength curve. So what we're talking about there is as I press up, theoretically the weight is easier. I'm in a more advantageous position pressing wise to be able to move the weight. When we add the chains to the exercise though, it challenges that strength curve. So we continually have to press and apply force through the full range of motion as more links from the chain come off the ground. So this is a fantastic exercise to put in your training programs for your athletes that are in season, or if they happen to have shoulder problems, but you still need to be able to train a pressing power or a pressing pattern, I'm sorry, but also be able to get some, some strength and some upper body size on them and keep that shoulder healthy. I think this is probably an amazing exercise on top of just the floor press by itself with the Swiss bar. Adding the chains in can really let you overload that athlete and keep that shoulder joint really safe. I really like this for our pitchers and our quarterbacks for when as much time as they spend overhead and throwing, we know how, mu how valuable and how much work they put into that shoulder to be able to make them the athlete that they are. So if we want to get some horizontal pressing in, this is probably a really good exercise for those particular athletes or any kind of strength athlete. So we've got the bar in the rack here. And how we set the, ba the chains up, I'm sorry, is you need 5 eighths chain, okay? So you need some good quality, big, thick chains. And pretty much you need to figure out where the middle of them are, give or take. So we've got a carabiner on our middle link. So we go to hang them from anything, they're usually pretty even. What we're gonna do is we're gonna drape it over the barbell. Just like so. And then we do it along the other side. So notice that we don't have any kind of attachment point uh, at the way that this goes on the bar like we would on, on the bench press or the squat. Um, so it just goes over the bar, the chains hang down. Yes, you've got chains on the ground. You want chains on the ground. So if you don't have chains on the ground, you got a really, really long, lanky athlete, you might want to be able to figure out a way to get the chains a little bit lower with easy loaders, but I've never really encountered that with all the athletes I've worked with in here. Um, but just if you happen to encounter that. But just since I'm here on the bar, and as we go up and down, the links move up and down. So somebody of my strength level, one chain honestly is probably not enough for me for my main exercise. I probably need two chains. For most younger middle school, high school athletes, the, the one chain is probably going to be all you need because each set of chains of 5 eighths that we have is 20 pounds. So I have 40 pounds of chain. We're going to assume half is on the ground. So I basically have 20 pounds of chain. That's not a big differential. So when you're looking to figure out how much chain weight you want to add, usually the recommendation is between 20 and 25 percent of the 1RM is the amount of chain weight that you would use. So if you have a 200 pound floor presser, you're going to want about 40 pounds of chain. So you're probably going to want anywhere you could justify one or two. I probably would put two chains on there for that athlete. So to get down here on the floor for the execution of it on the ground, pull the bar forward into the rack, figure out which grips you're going to use, set your back. So as we set our back, we want to make sure we're not protracted here. We're going to retract a little bit, pull our shoulder blades down. Okay, as you pull them down, they'll do the rest of what it's supposed to do. You don't want to really shrug up into your shoulders. We want to pull them down. 
That's where the bar is gonna sit as we come down. Everything just stay neutral grip, kind of come down, touch the floor, press back up. We do not want to relax down here in this position. We don't want to just do this. We want to be able to keep all that set that we have. So we're in a good, strong position here to press as we come out. With your feet, that's up to you and how you want to coach it. Uh, I prefer my power lifters have their feet out so they don't cheat. But if you're working with youth athletes, I'm completely okay with their feet being bent as long as we're not going to see major leg drive here and make this a decline floor press. So we're gonna grab the handles here, get set. My eyes are right in the middle of the barbell. I should be able to see through the Swiss bar, Swiss bar in, the, in the middle of the, the angles here. Grab my handles, big breath. So as you can tell, stay good. Control there on the floor come back up and good and explosive. Um, when it comes to programming these exercises, you're gonna probably program this as your main strength exercise. So you're probably looking anywhere from three to four sets of anywhere from three to six repetitions for your main strength work. You obviously could put it in for some hypertrophy and hit some eights, but I think with this big exercise, get your strength work, get it out. We love pairing this with a horizontal pull or prehab, especially when we've got the blast straps right here. Um, so you can get a lot of work in, in, in a minimal amount of time. Like I said, this is my preferred horizontal pressing exercise, especially with the chains for any kind of athletes that are overhead. If you have any questions, feel free to in the comment section. Thanks. Have a great day.